Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Merry Christmas and welcome to St. Paul's. What a joy it is to celebrate our Savior's birth together this evening. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our Judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased the joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken us as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
reading from Paul's letter to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Back in 2020, a few months into the pandemic, I received a wonderful gift, noise-canceling headphones. I was still working a fair amount from home, and so my coworkers at the time were three and one. So there was lots of action and lots of noise happening in the background at my house. Mostly this was wonderful, as I got to say, play with the kids during my eight-hour Zoom diocesan convention. Don't tell Bishop. But for those times when I really needed to buckle down and concentrate, the headphones were, and still are, fantastic. They cut down on the extraneous noise so that I can focus on what really matters. I don't know how many times I have heard the opening sentences of our Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor or Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. That's great, Luke, but can we just get to the good part? with the swaddling clothes and the manger and the shepherds and the angels. This historical context seems kind of like extraneous background noise. So most years, I just sort of cancel it out as if I were wearing those headphones. And yet, Luke displays remarkable intentionality as he tells his story. Everything he writes has a purpose. And so by slowing down to study these words in these two verses, to hear them rather than blocking them out, I think Luke's intention becomes clear. By setting the story of Jesus' birth in the midst of the reign of Augustus Caesar, And during the governorship of Quirinius, Luke is making a profound theological statement. He's not trying to be objective. He's not trying to earn four stars from the fact checkers. But he's making a seditiously bold claim. Jesus is Lord. And Caesar is Lord is not. Jesus is the Son of God, and Caesar is not. Jesus is the Savior of the whole world, and Caesar is not. Therefore, Jesus is the one and the only one who is worthy of all of our worship. Caesar is not. At various times throughout his reign, Caesar Augustus assumed all of these titles, Lord, Son of God, 
and even savior of the whole world. A remarkable politician and military strategist, Augustus won decisive victories over his opponents in a brutal civil war following Julius Caesar's assassination. His reign was referred to in his own day as the Pax Augusta, the Peace of Augustus. And Quirinius, well, he was one of Augustus's most trusted generals and advisors, one of his right-hand men, one of the men charged with preserving the Pax Augusta through any means necessary. By the standards of the world, Augustus accumulated virtually unlimited military, political, and social power, and he became the object of veneration and worship as Lord, as Son of God, as Savior of the whole world. And this man is the one that Luke makes into little more than a glorified footnote. All the power in the world, even the unlimited or seemingly unlimited power of Caesar, cannot generate salvation. It cannot generate lasting peace on earth. Sure, the Pax Augusta is remarkable if you're on the winning side, It's tough luck if you're a barbarian or if you're a slave. The peace that Caesar offers is simply the absence of conflict that comes through military dominance. But that kind of peace doesn't last. And, more importantly, it doesn't make us right with God. All the power of the world can't generate salvation. The power of salvation comes to the world from outside of the world. The same power that breathes the entire cosmos into existence breathes into Mary, fills Mary, overshadows Mary. And in the fullness of time, she gives birth to a son, to God the Son, veiled in flesh the Godhead see. This out of this world power looks like a crying, shivering newborn, swaddled up like any other baby with a manger for a crib. This out of this world power teaches blessed are the poor, those who mourn and the meek and love your enemies also. This this out-of-this-world power empties itself even unto death, even unto death on a cross. And this this out-of-this-world power will burst out of the tomb on Easter morning, And having ascended to the right hand of the Father, this out-of-the-world power will come again in great and glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead. This power is a person, and his name is not Caesar Augustus. It is Jesus. Jesus is Lord. And Caesar, in all his guises, past and present, is not. Jesus is God the Son, the eternal Word of God, by whom and for whom all things live and move and have their being. Jesus is the Savior of the whole world, a whole world which desperately needs the salvation that it cannot generate on its own. Salvation is born into this world as a baby. This birth, this holy, unspectacular, 
yet infinitely glorious birth in Bethlehem foreshadows another birth. A few years later, once again, the power of God will come crashing up against the power of a Caesar and his regent. Not Quirinius this time, but Pilate. And once again, Jesus will be swaddled, but in grave clothes. Once again, he is sealed away in darkness, but in a tomb instead of a womb. And once more, in the quiet of the early morning, new life is born. And the birth announcement is given by angels to a startled, frightened group of women and men who wonder if this good news could possibly be true. But it is true. Of course it's true. God in Christ has come to be with us to be for us. And nothing in this world, including any Caesar, past or present, and not even death itself, can stand in his way. He has come in out of this world power to save those who cannot save themselves, which is all of us. This is good news of great joy for you and for me and for all the people who have walked in darkness. The light has come into the world. O oh, come, let us adore him. Having heard the proclamation of the gospel, please stand as we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and John, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your we pray for Joe, our president, 
Bill Lee, our gover governor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Christmas and welcome to St. Paul's. I am so happy you are here tonight. If you are visiting us with us tonight, please know how happy we are that you are with us. We would love for you to be part of our church family if you are looking for a church family. We have had a wonderful Advent season and are launching into a wonderful Christmas, and this has taken an awful lot of you all many hours of preparation and work around the church, and we are very grateful for you. Um, the Altar Guild is led by Martha Worley and Gina Garner. They have taken care of all of the, all of the accoutrements that you see up here, which is a big job. The Flower Guild, led by Sudi Lubinecki, has outdone itself yet again this year. Our acolytes are led by George Carlson, who is our verger and acolyte master. Our Eucharistic ministers and lectors are led by Carol and Richard Detmer. Our ushers are led by Sandy Gleaves. Our tech team is led by Alex Hollis. Joe Cade has been doing our production, uh, our bulletin production this year. And our music, the choirs, the instrumentalists, the soloists, the pianists, all led by our director of music, Angela Tips. For our children, our children's pageant, our Advent wreath party, thank you, Cindy Guivart. The lessons and carols reception was provided by Joan Kellerman and her team. And our vestry is such a good, strong leadership body here at St. Paul's. Don Clayton, our senior warden, David Owen and Brad Miller, our junior wardens. And our staff has worked so hard this year, so hard these past weeks and these past months. They, these are as hardworking and talented a group of people as you will see anywhere. I'm very grateful to get to serve with them, and I'm very grateful to get to serve God with you all. We will be lighting our candles at the end of the service as we sing Silent Night. Just a reminder, tip the unlit candle so that you don't drip hot wax onto yourself. Tomorrow morning, we worship Christmas morning at 10 a.m. And next Sunday, New Year's Day, we also have one service at 10 a.m. Our Lord loves us. He feeds us. He invites us to come and eat the meal that he has prepared for us. And in a few moments, I invite you to come and eat.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Paul and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us eat the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.